Do you want more people to attend the online events you are hosting? Or do you dream of hosting online events and ensure that your people have the best experience ever? If so, you are in the right place. Today, Amy and I are diving into the emails you need to supercharge your online events. Let's get started. Welcome to the Grow Your Business for Good show. This is a place where coaches and consultants gather so you can learn how to lead a world-class business that does not tax your time, your energy, or your financial resources. We are your hosts, M. Shannon Hernandez. And Amy Hager of the Joyful Business Revolution. And our number one goal is to bring you clarity and insight on how to grow your business for good. So are you hosting online events or have you thought about hosting an online event, but you're just not sure how to use email to get people interested and fill out your audience with your ideal clients? Well, that's what we're diving into today. And Shannon, to kick us off, I actually want to set the stage of why use online events as part of your strategy in your business. Yeah, I love this question. So we posted every kind of probably online event you can imagine. Um, And just a side note, I was never so grateful to have all of this in place before COVID hit because it actually allowed us to um, just really dive into the online space and get people on board. Um, Let's first talk about some of the events that we've hosted, Amy, online, because I think the magic of what we bring to our clients and to this brand is helping them envision these events that are experiences, right? So we've done a book launch event. Mm -hmm. We've done a, um, of course, we've done challenges. We've done multi-day or single uh, session workshops. We've had roundtable discussions and we've hosted mastermind events online. What else have we done? Can you think of anything else? I mean, when you think about when we first started our club, it was kind of like a challenge, but it was a three-day experience where they got to sample what it would be like to come co-create messaging with us in the club. So I would say it was more of a sample um, teaching We've also hosted our Joy Money Retreat online, and we did this mostly during the pandemic. And there are bits and pieces that we will pull out of our Joy Money Retreat, which is a five-day experience in person that we host in the fall. But there are modules of some of our in-person things that we like to do online. Um, And I think one of my all-time favorite super fun workshops to attend in this brand was the confidence on camera workshop that Shannon used to teach. And we would tell stories about photos that were in our phones. We would come up with our confident introduction. We had a framework to follow if we wanted to use video. But I think the key to everything we've ever done online, whether you're in person or online with us, the experience really doesn't change. Sure, the delivery platform changes. I can't hug you when you're on the other side of Zoom. I mean, I look kind of weird, right? (laughs) But really making sure that you have that experience. And I almost feel like sometimes some people think, I'm going to do an online event. It's too simple. I'll just create a PowerPoint and talk through it. Oh, God. It falls flat. Absolutely. So we really want to help you envision, yeah, not just the emails to get people to your events, but you creating an experience online. Mm -hmm. Um, We've even done brunches and dinner parties online. That is true. We've done cooking. Remember when Tanya um, Edinger organized a gift exchange for the community and we used Zoom and we opened our gifts online? (laughs) Yes. Yeah. And we've actually, speaking of opening gifts, we did a drawing And we had the person who won the gift. They did a, it was more of a go live with me. And we did the opening of the gift live, but it would have been so easy to do it as part of like one of our workshops or something too. Yeah. So what I want each person listening to this podcast to take away today is that if you want to stand out in your space, if you want to stand out with your personality, if you want to really ensure people get an experience from your event, then I actually want you to think of your online events as experiences. Mm -hmm. And if you don't know how to do that, it's okay. 
Um, let's set up a call with Amy and she will help you understand the multitude of experiences you could be hosting for your business. And the number one feedback that we get from our community is I love going to your events, like whether they're a 90 minute uh, workshop or a three day jammy online, like they are just totally all in for it. And that makes me feel really good because we put a lot of heart and soul into building experiences for people. We definitely do. Yeah. And so I think though, all right, we've thought about the experience and the online event. A lot of people miscalculate, I would say that it's, it's an event. You still need to market it. And it, it almost takes as much energy to market an online event as it does an in-person event. They're, they're the same, I think in my mind. Um, and so when we've been marketing our online events, Shannon, what have we found, about how much time do people need? Because they're not traveling, right? But people's calendars do fill up. Where's our sweet spot at? And I think the sweet spot might be different for everybody, but how about ours? Yeah, so we've experimented, uh, experience, what's the word? Experimented. <laughs> we've <Slightly> experimented. experimented. <laughs> <laughs> we, we call marketing an experimentation, y'all. Uh, an experiment. We have experimented with different time frames um, because that's what you need to do with your marketing. And what we have found over the years is people really need a good two and a half, three weeks um, to make a decision for an event or to move stuff off their calendar to reschedule clients if they want to come. We, of course, are live in person people and our content personalities. So we love having everyone live with us. Like we just think the energy is so different for us. Um, but one of the things that helps us understand um, our sweet spot in the marketing time frame and how, how many emails should go out. And I want to talk actually about that in a moment is this idea of um, Amy and I are always setting for ourselves and with our clients, good, better, best goals. So what would the good goal for attendance be? What would the better goal for attendance be? And what would the best goal? And this gives us an indication of maybe how much follow-up we need to do. We're going to talk about that in terms of your emails. It gives us an indication of, is this thing flopping? <laughs> like mm -hmm. if we roll something out in in and in week two of three weeks of promoting, nobody has um, purchased or registered for the event. We know that my messaging is off. Yep. Right. And it doesn't happen often. It. What's that? And we revamp it. When we, we realize it. the messaging is off, we don't just keep going. We take a pause. We have to stop doing everything else we're doing because we're committed to hosting this event mm -hmm. too. So I think that's important. Yeah. So you'll find your marketing sweet spot, um, the time that your audience needs as you kind of um, play with the marketing timeframes. But I am going to encourage you to set those good, better, best goals in terms of how many you want at your event. The other thing I want to say is I love it when I get to tell my clients and remind myself, you just have to start where you are. All right. That's what I want you to do. Like you may dream of having like stadiums full, like Tony Robbins, and you may dream of having like online events where thousands of people sign up. And if that's your thing, great. You may also dream of having four or five or 10 people with you intimately. And so you really need to check in with your energy and your intention around the event. What's going to create the best experience for everyone involved. And that's why we set those good, better and best goals. All right. So we really tap into that energetic space um, before we ever roll out any messaging and marketing. So right. I think um, three weeks is, is our sweet spot. I'm going to test this year, too. If you remember, I, I told you I wanted to test with two weeks. Haven't done it yet, but it is on my my mind to do. Yeah. Um, and the biggest thing, and I'll have Amy talk about this a little, but the biggest thing I have to remember, and I need you all to remember in terms of your marketing is don't assume people operate like you do. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm going to give a very specific example. <laughs> this happened yesterday. We had an online event <laughs> Yeah, and our, our, Goal good goal was 10, our better goal was 15, and our best goal was 20. And one hour before the event, we were at eight registrants. 
And I said to myself, well, I guess we didn't meet our goal. <laughs> well, I'm showing up with eight. It's going to be fine. But I really would have loved to get to my good goal of 10. And we sent a final email Mm -hmm. That literally says last call and Amy, tell them what happened. Revolutionize your messaging and marketing with story. Hop on over to joyfulbusinessrevolution.com backslash 65 story ideas to grab a resource that will help you craft stories that grow your community, convert prospects to clients and increase your visibility and impact. So we got, we sent the final email the day before the event. Overnight, we got four people. 15 minutes before we started, a registrant came in. And at that point, I know the automation isn't going to get this person the workbook or the Zoom link quick enough. So I had to be paying attention to send this person the info. And they, they showed up. The ones who showed up yesterday, who showed up to our event, were... Ones who registered late, and then a few who had registered more earlier on. And we didn't get 100% attendance, but we got, I want to say, like it was 80% attendance. We were missing a few. And I I knew the few that we were going to be missing, though, because I had reached out to everybody who registered. Even those who registered the night before, I registered, you know, I sent them an email that morning. Um, the only one I couldn't email to ask my golden question to was the one that registered 15 minutes ahead of time because, you know, you're scrambling. But I had communicated with them all beforehand. And so I knew what the biggest question was that was on their heart and what they were wanting to get answered out of our session. I knew, you know, one of them was dog sitting and she was like, is this going to be a problem if there's a bunch of crazy dogs running around? I was like, of course not. We understand life happens. One was at a doctor's appointment with her husband and she's like, I just can't multitask. I can't listen to you guys and pay attention to his doctor's appointment. And so we made the decision. It wasn't best for her to come live yesterday and she's listening to it on replay. But you know, I'm going to follow up with her probably tomorrow because she'll get the replay today and just say, hey, did you get a chance to listen? What questions do you have, if any, or did this answer all of your questions? But I really think by getting to know your online event attendees, as well as you would get to know your in-person event attendees and, and doing it by reaching out before the event is such a beautiful way to create that stronger bond, to build that relationship and to also really manage those expectations going in. I mean, there were quite a few yesterday who were like, I want to, I want to master my messaging. We weren't teaching a messaging yesterday. We were teaching a planning and strategy session. And so I responded back and said, we're not going to dive into your messaging at all. And so what you're going to leave with, though, is everything you need to get yourself prepared to start creating that messaging. And everybody who showed up, we always asked to rate us uh, 10. This was definitely worth my time or one. I should have took a nap. The lowest score we got was an eight. And the only reason why is she had been someone who had listened to our podcast and learned some of the tips because she had listened to every season of our podcast and was like a very due diligent student and had very, very good notes. So I was really shocked when she said that. That was but, like super fan status. Yeah, like super fan status. But even yesterday, we had someone who's taken the exact same workshop three times with us and she yeah. still learned something. And I still reached out to her beforehand to be to ask what question does she hope to get answered at this session today? Yeah, so it's so, a beautiful question to ask. Yeah. So I just want to break. Amy just dropped a lot of golden nuggets that I'm going to like backtrack you into. So pick up your pen or pencil or your notes app on your phone and just kind of um, make sure you understand these highlights. So number one, give yourself the sweet spot marketing time. All right. You, you just have to experiment that you got to play with it. Set good, better, and best goals. That's fantastic. All right. For me, it's realizing not everyone operates like I do. Like there's no way in hell I would be signing up for something an hour before it starts. My nervous system doesn't operate like that. My calendar doesn't operate like that, but 
I'm not all the people on my list, right? So I've had to learn to send that last call email the day before or to send the, the final Facebook post or whatever that, hey, we're gathering, you know, we teach here, be the invitation. So I continue to be the invitation even for the people who love making last minute decisions, all right? Now, some of the stuff that Amy just kind of dropped on you today, which is super fun, is really what makes this brand stand out. And it's emails that you would send to people who are registered. Um, getting, so I just want to paint a picture for you all. Most of the people I know who do online events, this is how it works. They promo the event, you sign up for the event, you get the thing, you might get a reminder, and you might get 20 reminders, which is annoying as hell. All right, I don't do that. I operate as if you are all adults and you will put it in your calendar, but let me not digress. <laughs> all right. And they never reach out to you. They never reach out to say, what are you looking forward to? Or, Hey, I see you're new to this community or, um, what's, you know, Amy asked her golden question. What's the one thing on your heart that you want to make sure Shannon answers in the session? And this is by far and large, the personalization that gets us the results we have. Does it take time? Yep. Can it be automated? Nope. <laughs> and some people do. And that's their jam. But we choose not to. Yes. We often will say to ourselves, when I need to remember, and to our clients, the things that cannot be automated are the things or scaled. The things that people tell you to automate for scaling, if you actually take a human approach, it's going to land much better. Right. Mm -hmm. And this is a great example of it. OK, the other thing I want to share about emails leading up to your event is it's a beautiful opportunity for anyone that's just coming into the event to get the, the vibe of what you are. Mm -hmm. about. Yeah. And so we made a decision in the last month or two to put a PS on our um, uh, registration email that says, hey, if you're new here, um, joy is the foundation of everything we do. Here's, uh, do you have a copy of Shannon's new book, Practical Joy yet? If not, you can grab it here. And have you watched our documentary, our 10 minute documentary? And people love that. They love knowing that we care enough to get them oriented to what we're about here. Um, yeah. But it's also like when you go to a party, <laughs> right? And maybe you don't know everyone at the party and you're a little nervous about walking in, like what's the vibe going to be? We're trying to um, so mitigate that on the front end. Right. And I think it's working. What do you think, Amy? Yeah, I totally think it's working. Especially we had someone at this last workshop who, I don't know, somehow found out about it. She still isn't even for sure how she found out about it or where she saw it. So she registered right away. She, she booked a call with me for after our session. And um, she had watched, I think, some of the documentary, not the whole thing, but some of it. And so she like knew enough coming in what we were about that she really, she felt comfortable jumping right in and participating. And I think... You know, Shannon and I really work hard to create that safe space and that quality space for any of our events. And some of that work is done through your emails and through those PS sections within the email. Um, and so if it's not something that you have, like if you don't have a documentary or you don't have a book like we have, you, you could always put your mission statement. Mm. Or your core values. We teach to create three to five core values here in this brand. And it can just be a simple PS if you're new to these parts. Here's what we stand for. It doesn't have to be anything extravagant like a book or a documentary or anything along those lines. Absolutely. Warm it up, y'all. You know that song? Warm it up, Chris. I'm about to... <laughs> No, <laughs> now I'm well, curious. It's a hip hop it. song from. <laughs> so y'all, I want you to warm it up. I want you to warm up your communication. I want you to warm up your, um, oh my God, please don't send stale emails. So that we're going to move into pitfalls. One of the biggest pitfalls that we have to help our clients with, which is fine. All right. And 
and it's necessary is when you send the email about your event, oftentimes what's missing is who is it best for and why should they attend, <laughs> right? We all have a million choices. So you may be so excited about your training or about your book launch or whatever it is, and that's great, but you know, what's in it for them? Right. Who is it best for and why do you want them there? What will they walk away with? And so we we have to work on that messaging um, with our clients because they're just want to tell when it is, where it is, how to register. And there's not any of that emotional. Remember, everyone, that your um, clients buy with their emotions. Yeah. And they make decisions about coming to events with emotions right. and they make decisions about working with you with their emotions. And this has probably been the hardest thing I've had to learn in the messaging is because, well, for a very long time, I didn't even know about my emotions. I was raised in a family where we didn't discuss emotions um, and the emotions were absent and there was no discussion of them. And if you did discuss them, it wasn't pleasant. So mm -hmm. I'm a very straightforward, like, when is it? Where is it? How do I get there? Well, I learned rather quickly, that's fine. And 98% of the people need to know who is it for and why should I attend? Right. Right. So yeah. that's one of the biggest pitfalls is giving that context, letting people feel the emotion behind it. Amy, what's another pitfall we kind of have to coach around? Um, so besides the context and, you know, who it's for, um, it, when they're talking about the context of it, they, they're talking about it in the sense of for them. So I'm the host and I'm talking about why I'm excited about it, but they're not again, wording or messaging it for the attendee and what the attendee is struggling with, what they're feeling and what they need help with. So just to go a little bit of a layer deeper on that, um, I want to teach this framework about joyful email marketing because it's helped me grow my business to almost a million dollar brand where if you go that layer deeper, if you feel like you're just spinning and you never know what to do and when to do it with your email marketing, you're not alone Let's create a framework together in this workshop that's going to work for you. Mm. So talking for them and not necessarily for you, even though it is, it's your framework, it's your methodology, it's your signature system, it's whatever you want to label it. But we've got to make sure we position it in a way that they feel that it's more about them and less about you. Yeah. And I want to just hit on that because I've been working with quite a few clients this week and repositioning messaging because we are all excited about what we do. And there's nothing wrong with that. We're excited about our methods. We're excited about our framework. But if you make yourself the hero, you, your client, you're never going to sign the client because there's only room for one hero in each story. Think about Superman. Think about Little Red Riding Hood right? Think about any story or major motion picture, there's room for one hero. And so we need to make sure your messaging makes the people coming to your event, the heroes of their own journey. Okay. And not you or your method or your framework. And that is such an easy thing that even if I'm not Usually I write the copy and I'm the hero or the method is the hero. And on the second pass, I have to go back and say, okay, how do I reword this? Just like Amy did. That's very natural. Okay. It's a very natural thing, but it'll make a big difference in um, increasing the numbers of the people who are registering for your events. Totally. So this was fun. Amy, what do we got coming up in the next episode around email marketing? Well, talking about meet you where you're at, if you've been listening to this season so far and about why you should be using email marketing or how to be using email marketing with online events or in-person events, but you're sitting here and you're like, I don't even have an email newsletter. I don't have email marketing. You have no idea where to get started. Well, hold on to your seats because the next episode is for you. So we're going to talk about how to get started with an email newsletter. So we'll see you next time.
Adios. Bye. Thank you for listening to the Grow Your Business for Good podcast with your hosts, M. Shannon Hernandez and Amy Hager. Come on over to the joyful side of business and marketing. Go to www.joyfulbusinessrevolution.com. And remember our mantra, if it ain't joyful, we ain't doing that shit. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to this show, leave a review, and spread the good news with other coaches and consultants. Adios.